Nothing about the young Charles Darwin suggested he would grow up to be the sort of man who would change our view of the world. He loved hunting and beetle collecting far more than his formal studies. In fact, the young Darwin dropped out of medical school, much to the disappointment of his father, Robert Darwin, a doctor. Darwin finally managed to complete a course of study for the ministry at Cambridge, but he never served in a church. A round-the-world trip on a refitted warship, the Beagle, changed his calling. Darwin expected to travel for two years. Instead, he spent five years exploring and collecting, and observing. The Galapagos Islands proved the most important stop on his voyage. Darwin observed that various species of tortoises and finches changed from island to island. He didn't realize the significance at the time, but the observations and his collections would eventually help lead him to the theory of natural selection. In 1836, Darwin came home with enough material to provide him with years of work. 3,000 pages of notes, over 1,500 species of insects, 4,000 skins, bones and dried specimens, and crates full of fossils. At 27, Darwin made cautious steps towards marriage. On a piece of paper, he recorded his reasons for and against the institution. On the plus side, he wrote, Hmm, children, someone to take care of the house and companionship. Better than a dog, anyhow. Negatives included the loss of freedom and less money for books. But Darwin talked himself into marriage to Emma Wedgwood, saying, I shall never know French or see the continent or go to America or go up in a balloon. Oh, never mind, my boy. There's many a happy slave. Darwin fathered ten children and rarely left his home near London. But he never lost the freedom of his imagination. He wandered his estate pondering questions that his voyage and simple truths about breeding farm animals suggested. He wrote three hours a day. For 20 years, Darwin wrestled with the concept of evolution and natural selection, fully aware that his ideas would outrage those who believed God was responsible for all creation. He started with the familiar. For hundreds of years, people had been selectively breeding faster horses, Darwin called the process artificial selection. Our English horses, he said, differ from horses of every other breed, but they do not owe their difference and superiority to descent from any single pair, but to continued and selective breeding and training of many individuals during each generation. Darwin's book, On the Origin of Species, went on to tackle natural selection. In the real world, random genetic changes may improve an individual's ability to survive. Those organisms are naturally selected to improve their species, the way breeders attempt to artificially improve the horse. The book sold out the first day of publication and changed the way we look at life. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection has become the unifying concept for biology. From so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being evolved.